This is Reverend Kirk Lawton, minister at Ocean Lakes Family Campground, and this is our podcast. Our prayer is that this message may enrich your life as you find God especially meaningful to you. Thank you for worshiping with us. What you don't know can't hurt you is a phrase which most of us have heard for years. It's often used as an alibi to excuse our ignorance. Sometimes we say it's because we have learned so much of what we do know that has not helped us. Perhaps we ought to admit that there is a partial truth to this statement. You may be able to think of some situations where we're better off not to know something, where ignorance is an asset. But the danger of saying what you don't know can't hurt you lies in the fact that it's only a partial truth. That means that part of it is also a lie. For the most part, ignorance is not a virtue. Rather, it's a sin, a deep tragedy. What you don't know can hurt you. In the 19th chapter of Luke, verse 44, Jesus is talking with some of the religious leaders of his day concerning their moral blindness. He describes the destruction which will come upon them from their enemies. And he says five important words which give us the reason for this. The five words, because you did not know. Some time ago I heard a speaker tell about the famous Mexican bank robber, Jorge Rodriguez, who was operating back and forth across the border around the turn of the century, over a hundred years ago, he was so successful in stealing money that the Texas Rangers finally assigned a whole posse to watch the border and to put a stop to this thief. One morning, a ranger spotted Jorge stealthily slipping into the United States. That was before we had all the Mexican or or the other nationalities trying to cross the border. He followed this bandit as he robbed yet another bank and then fled back to Mexico. The ranger trailed him in the saloon where he went to relax. And then the ranger sneaked in, got the drop on him and put a gun to the bank robber's head. The ranger said to him, I know who you are, Jorge Rodriguez. And unless you give me all the money you have stolen from the Texas banks, I am going to blow your brains out right now. Now, unfortunately, Jorge did not speak English (laughs) and the Texas Ranger did not speak Spanish. And there the two of them were at an impasse, really a Mexican standoff. And about that time, a little Mexican came up and said, I can speak both languages. I'll translate for you. And he proposed, he proceeded to put that Ranger's proposal into words that Jorge, Jorge Rodriguez could understand. Jorge listened very attentively since the gun was still at his head. And as soon as the little Mexican man finished rattling off something in Spanish, Jorge immediately answered, please tell the big Texas Ranger that I have not spent any of the money I have stolen from the Texas banks. If he will go to the town well, face north, and count down five stones, he will find a loose stone there. Behind it is all the money I have taken. I have not spent one cent. Please hurry and tell him I want to live. And with those words, which were spoken in Spanish and not understood by the waiting Texas Ranger, the little Mexican got a half smile on his face as he turned to the big Texas Ranger and he said, Jorge Rodriguez is a brave man. He says he is ready to die. (laughs) Now, the point of this story is that what we don't know can hurt us. Oh, had Jorge Rodriguez only known English, or had the ranger known Spanish? Now, I'm thinking this morning of several areas of things that we don't know. First, there are the things that we have not learned. These things hurt us. Someone once said, what you know would make a book. What you don't know would make an even bigger book. When we think of the vast wealth of knowledge in our world today, it's appalling to see the little that we do know. I heard some time ago about a rugged old gentleman who lived to be over 100. He was once asked 
to what he attributed his long life and health. He said he was glad that he was born before germs were discovered. He knew nothing about germs. Therefore, he said he had lived a long time because he had less to worry about than most folks. Well, uh, surely in the field of medicine, physical health, it'd be hard to convince anybody that ignorance is bliss. It's no such thing. What we don't know about viruses, cancer, COVID, mental illness, a host of other diseases, all that hurts us. Many years ago, doctors did not bother to wash their hands before delivering babies. And they seemed to have no idea that this had anything to do with the fact that so many babies and mothers died at childbirth. There's still places in our world where people are bound by such primitive ideas. And in addition to this ignorance, there's fear and superstition. What we don't know, what we have not learned, definitely hurts us. No, ignorance is not bliss. It's a tragic curse. Not only are we hurt by the things we have not learned, but when we look at the other side of this coin, we have to realize that we are also hurt by the things that we have mislearned. Plain ignorance is bad, but when you add to it prejudice, what we have mislearned, bias, conviction based on wrong or inaccurate information, that's even worse. Charles Kettering, who gave his life to research and engineering, once said that it isn't what you don't know, but what you do know for sure that isn't so that'll get you in, in the way of the, and get in the way of your mind. Wrong thinking, biased judgment, propaganda that defeats the truth, assumptions and conclusions that do not rest upon the facts. These are some of the things that we have mislearned. And oh, how they hurt us. I'm constantly amazed at the things people tell me about what the Bible says for certain circumstances. Now, I will readily admit I am not the final authority on all that's in the Bible. But oh, how it grieves me to hear those who form their own theology, their own way of thinking. And then they say, well, the Bible says that. We're living in a day of increasing biblical illiteracy. Some denominations used to be known as people of the book or the Bible. But I sometimes wonder just how many of us are really people of the book or the Bible, whatever our denomination may be. A book critic of a secular book once wrote to the author criticizing and fiercely denouncing the book he had just, uh, that had been written recently. The author heard this criticism and he replied with a very kind letter to this hostile critic. He said, Sir, since I do want my book to be read widely, I have decided that in my next edition, I'm asking the publishers to delete that section on the sexual exploits of the two main characters. The critic then replied by saying that in this case, he'd be glad to change his mind. He would recommend the book. Then the author responded again by letter saying, thank you, that's all I wanted to know. There is not now and there never has been any section whatsoever in my book on the sexual exploits of anybody. I just wanted to assure myself you had never read my book. Our world is full of ignorance concerning the things we have mislearned about Christianity. There are those in increasing numbers today who have strong resentment against Christianity in the church who haven't the foggiest idea of what Christianity is all about. They've never bothered to read the book. So many of those who are turned off by the organized church today have formed strong opinions on rumor and misinformation or on maybe some isolated instance of what may have happened in one church years ago. Prejudice, you know, is a great time saver. It enables you to form a strong opinion without bothering to get all the facts first. The things that we have mislearned do hurt us. Oh, how true. You know the story about Willie? He worked in a place where they mixed certain chemicals, a laboratory. 
One day he saw this container of fluid. He thought it was, and he was very thirsty. It looked just like water, but it was not water. It was actually a sulfuric acid, a strong chemical with the name H2SO4. Of course, when Willie drank what he thought was water, that was the end of Willie. <laughs> Somebody came along later and wrote on his tombstone, Poor little Willie is gone from us. His face we'll see no more. For what he thought was H2O was H2SO4. Yes, what we have mislearned can hurt us. There were some people 2,000 or so years ago who killed a great man on the cross. They had strong opinions about him. They knew for certain that he was subversive. They even thought they were pleasing God and getting rid of this man. But this man prayed to God to be lenient with their ignorance. Father, forgive them, he prayed, for they know not what they do. Now, what is it that God forgives? Sin. Jesus did not say. Jesus uh, said that they did not know what they were doing. And he prayed for them to be forgiven. You see, ignorance can be sin in God's sight. All right, let's recap for just a minute. Not only are we hurt by things we have not learned, by the things we have mislearned, but in the third place, we are hurt by things we refuse to learn. So much of our ignorance is willful. This moves us from the area of the mental to the moral. In many circles today, the cry is, give the people an education, they'll be good people. Horace Mann once said that given enough schools, we could abolish crime. Well, look at all the schools we have now, but the crime rate has not been abolished by any means. How little do we know about human nature? The problem is not so much in the head as it is in the heart. It's not the uneducated person who's a threat to the things we hold dear. It's the person who's educated in some ways, but ignorant in others, more vital ways. Oh, it's so frightening today to see how much we have advanced in so many ways educationally, and that's great. But at the same time, our morals have not only failed to keep pace, they seem so often to have taken a backward turn. Somebody said man has knowledge about many things, but little wisdom in the use of these things. We've learned how to make this world a neighborhood before we have learned the necessity of making it a brotherhood. Mankind knows many facts, but we have yet to learn moral truths about what these facts mean. We know how to control forces more than we know how to control ourselves. And unless our wisdom of the head has a corresponding wisdom of the heart, mankind is surely doomed. The New Testament keeps trying to get us to look at ourselves. The Bible tells us that without God's wisdom in our heart, we're totally lost. Our world, well, let me bring it closer. Our own community in which we live is becoming increasingly filled with people who are decent, upright, responsible, respectable, but have no personal knowledge of the, or relationship with God through Jesus Christ, His Son. Many of these people may be on the roll of some church somewhere. But in addition to these I've just mentioned, unbelievers are becoming more and more numerous and more vocal. Their views are being listened to seriously by some. More and more people are exposed to views that question all the basic foundations of our faith. And thus it's increasingly important that Christians, and also those who want to be, be able to offer a reasonable explanation for what we believe. But this can never come to pass as long as we refuse to learn. And here, what we don't know is already hurting us. The words of 1 Peter 3.15 surely apply to all of us. And I'm reading from the Living Bible. Quietly trust yourself to Christ your Lord. And if anybody asks you why you believe as you do, be ready to tell him and do it in a gentle and respectful way. 
Yes, the things that we do not know about our faith, these things are hurting us now. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He answered these words in answer to Thomas one day. Jesus also said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Not to know Jesus is our deepest ignorance. It doesn't matter what else we may know. Not to know Jesus is to miss the path, the truth, and God. Do you feel like there's some things you need to know about our Lord and His dealing with us? Do you ever feel like you're in darkness? In the prologue to John's Gospel, he writes one of the most beautiful statements ever recorded about Jesus. This is John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Eternal life is in Him, and this life gives light to all mankind. His life is is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. May I make that last verse personal for us? His light is shining in our ignorance, and our ignorance has never put it out. Yes, what you don't know can hurt you, but by God's grace, we can let the light of God's truth come more and more into the darkness of our lives, dispelling the gloom and filling us with light and life more and more abundant. Would you pray with me? Father, while life's dark maze we tread and griefs around us spread, be thou our guide. Bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let us ever stray from Thee aside. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Amen.